today, um, just know that God is here with us. I'm changing my screen as we talk. There we go. Now I think I'm where I want to be. I'm in church. Praise God this morning, everybody. Come on and uh, if, keep your mics muted. But while your mics are muted, sing along with me. And let's recognize that even as you're singing along, we're singing in congregation this morning. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Now, come on and go back to Louisiana with me when we sing it like we used to sing it on Sunday morning. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. I will bless that wonderful name of Jesus, I will bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Praise God, everybody. Come on, put your hands together right where you are and just bless the Lord. He delights in being blessed. He deserves our praise and he loves it for himself. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a wonderful privilege it is being in church, in God's house again this morning. And I'm looking forward to a beautiful Lord's Day. For the next few moments, I'm just looking forward to a, a great time of fellowship online, knowing that Jesus said, if you gather two or three together in my name, there I will be in the midst of them. So he's here online with us this morning. Praise God for his presence. We're going to have our opening scripture and our opening prayer this morning. You know who you are who've been designated. Come on and give us our opening scripture this morning. I think that's Deacon Blue, isn't it? No, Pastor. Pastor, I'm doing the opening scripture. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Turner. Good morning, Ephesus. Our scripture lesson will come from Isaiah, the 32nd chapter, verses 16 and 17. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. The effect of righteousness will be peace and the result of righteousness, quietness and trust forever. God's word for God's people for this time. Praise God for his word. Deacon Blue is leading us to our opening prayer this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for just another day, a day that wasn't promised to us. And Lord, we thank you. As we slept in our very image of death last night, Lord, you kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, you touched our head and gave us another day of grace. Grace, Lord, we thank you for that. Now, God, we ask that you be with us all today, Lord Jesus. Touch this Ephesus family, Lord. Touch our pastors, Lord. Continue to encamp your angels around them, Lord Jesus. And Lord, just continue to keep their bodies from all hurt, harm, and danger. Oh, God, we ask that you touch our leaders in this country, Lord. Oh, God, touch their hearts, Lord. Oh, God, make those hearts of stone to turn them to flesh, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we know you can do it. 
And God, we ask you to touch those that are still fighting that virus. Oh, God, you are a conqueror. Oh, God, we thank you because with you, everything is going to be all right. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's been a strange and uh, peculiar week. Those of us who have been students of the Bible for a while and sort of have even a minimum idea of Bible history. First of all, um, some of us remember the scripture that is in Proverbs that says there is nothing new under the sun. We know from Bible history that, that this is not new. If you're not even a student of Bible history and you studied even a little bit of history in school, you recognize if you, if you studied at least the history of civilization, studied the history of some countries, that um, pandemics and that pandemonium, that conflict, that wars, uh, even domestic conflict is not new. It is not strange. And while this is a strange time for us, it is not new. The one thing that we know is that God always prevails. That's going to be the theme for today's service. And as usual, it's not going to be a long service. Um, just before I go into the message, let me make a couple of announcements. First of all, I want to thank Deacon Blue for his many, many years of service in Sunday school. I didn't talk to him ahead of time. Sometimes I talk to people ahead of times, and sometimes I just go ahead and do what the Spirit leads me to do. Deacon Blue has been our assistant Sunday school superintendent for, I don't remember how many years now. And uh, after the passing of our Sunday school superintendent, Sister Jesse, they worked so well together. Now it's time for me to ask Deacon Blue to, um, move up in title, not move up in works, but to move up in title. And I'd like to appoint Deacon Blue officially as uh, our Sunday school superintendent for Ephesus Ministries and ask Deacon Blue if he will accept that position. If yes, so, I just would, shake Pastor. Thank you, Deacon Blue. I, yes, sir. Thank you. You follow the, uh, let me use uh, sort of an official word, third in succession in Sunday school superintendents. I think Deacon Crawl, if I remember correctly, was our first Sunday school superintendent, and Deacon Crawl did a commendable and excellent job. Following him was uh, Sister Jessie, and now Deacon Blue will continue to lead us in Sunday school, and Sunday school has just been awesome. Um, just because I am not saying something and not showing my picture does not mean that I'm not there. I am there. Thank you, Deacon Blue. We pray that God will bless you as you continue that great, great work of leading us in Sunday school. And I want to thank Elder Blue for being by your side as you do that work. Let me again thank our producers for today, Sister Latasha and uh, Sister Shannon, for continuing to do a good and excellent job keeping us online. Uh, Sister Latasha, that picture that you have of now is such a beautiful picture. And that heartwarming smile that I'm looking at right now really honestly is warming my heart. God bless you for all that you continue to do. I appreciate all of you. Let me deal with a little bit of current events. On yesterday, the governor decreed that churches and places of worship are now allowed to have a, uh, a minimum of, a maximum rather, of 25% of their building capacity in worship. 25% of the building capacity in worship. Yes, that means that if Ephesus would go back into worship right now, our entire congregation could come back. But let me submit to you that we are not ready because. Um, it requires much more than people are thinking. There are some churches now, well, there are a few churches that never stopped having worship. There are some churches that are going back into worship today, some that are going back here next week. Let's pray for the safety, the, the, the health safety of those who go back. Because we must never forget just because spring is coming soon, hopefully to a close, and we're going into summer, 
just because time has moved on and we've moved into something else. Let us not forget that that horrible, horrible virus is still there and people are still dying. While I'm saying that, let me ask the church to join in with me. Some of you remember Pastor Bob Tice. Pastor Tice has preached at Ephesus before and we have had some close associations in ministry. I got an email from Pastor Tice yesterday. Um, his wife had, had the COVID test um, within the last few days because she was going to California. Her daughter has had a baby and she wanted to go to California and spend some time with her daughter and the baby. So she took the COVID test. Then she got on an airplane yesterday and flew to California, yesterday or Friday. And um, when she got to the airport, of course, they did another COVID test there and they diagnosed her with COVID. And so now she has to be quarantined. And I think the quarantine period is a minimum of uh, 14 days. She flew all the way to California to be with her daughter and a newborn baby. And because she tested positive for COVID, she cannot see them for at least 14 days. And let's pray that the diagnosis not, does not lead into full blown. I said all of that to say, we still must be careful. And so we will pray and say, God, you lead us into when. Let's continue to pray for the conflict that is going on all across the nation and even here in Buffalo. It is almost sheer pandemonium. Um, let's pray and know that God is in the midst, but that he will continue to remind us that he is there. I have to say that for me, the death of George Floyd represents the possibility of the same kind of death for every Black man in America. I just have to say that. And so um, we pray that God, please bring about change, bring about peace. I joined Sister Latasha in saying, let's pray for our young people because all of these changes suddenly is overwhelming. It's overwhelming to us old folk. You can imagine what it's doing to the minds of young people. They are feeling this, they are listening. And they are going into a new world, into a new way of living. And no one, absolutely no one is certain what to tell them. Let's pray that God will be with them. We are going into, um, a sister, is Sister Della there? Uh, if Sister Della is there, I'm going to ask her as usual to give us a praise and worship song. And then I'm going to preach the gospel. And then we're going to have communion. Sister Della, please give us a good Thank praise you. and worship song. <laughs> okay, Pastor. Uh, the song just simply says, I've got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Even though it doesn't look right, I just have a feeling that everything is going to be all right. In your homes, it's going to be all right. In your finances, it's going to be all right. I just have a feeling that everything is going to be all right. I've got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Oh, I've got a thing is going to be all right. Oh, I got a feeling that everything is gonna be all right be all right be all right be all right you can sing it with me oh i got a feeling that everything is gonna be all right oh i Got a feeling that everything is gonna be all right. Oh, I got a feeling that everything is gonna be all right. Be all right, 
be all right, be all right. The Holy Ghost, I believe he let us know in his word that everything is going to be all right. I trust him. And that everything is going to be all right. I believe his word that I got a feeling that everything is going to be, be all right. It's going to be all right. Be all right. I believe it's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's going to be all right. And it is, yes, it is. all right. I want to thank Shannon. Uh, for reminding me by text message right quickly. I did, and I feel so bad about it. Uh, blame it on old age. I did forget uh, uh, Brother Walker, Deacon Walker, was Sunday school superintendent after Deacon Crawl, and he did an excellent job. And thank you for reminding me of that, Shannon. There's a lot that goes on in the background of these uh, uh, tapings, and, and I need that because you all know that I'm absent by that as it is, and as I get older, some things just escape me. And so thank you for reminding me of that, Shannon. Um, let me go into the word. Today, the message comes from the Gospel of St. John last week and uh, in Bible study. And in um, our Sunday morning sermon, we, we took the time of Pentecost to remind us of the coming of the Holy Ghost. And we dealt with the 14th chapter of the Gospel of St. John. Today we go right back to that 14th chapter. The text particularly for the sermon is verses eight and nine. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? This morning we deal with an age-old question, a question that began to surface immediately after Adam and Eve were put out of the Garden of Eden. When they were in the Garden of Eden, the Bible said God would come down and spend time with them and God would come down and talk with them. When they sinned, that's a key point, when they sinned, when they sinned. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah says that, that, that uh, your sins have separated between you and God. When they sinned, the Bible said that when God came into the Garden of Eden, and this is a very key point, God himself raised the question, I, I'm here, I am in paradise, I'm in the Garden, Adam, I am coming down where you have been used to seeing me come. But he said, Adam, where are you? thou. Adam, where are you? Adam, he was an all-knowing, all-wise, omnipotent, all-powerful God who knows all things. He, he raises a question that somehow must be spiritually rhetorical. He says, Adam, where are you? It wasn't because God didn't know where Adam was, but, but the question was meant by Adam himself. Adam, where are you? Do, do you have any idea of where you are? Do you know what's going on? What God really was saying significantly was that Adam now, because of sin, there was a breach between you and I. Recognize, first of all, Adam, that there is that breach. What is significant is that the Bible said Adam and Eve knew God was coming. So because of sin, they hid themselves. It's like playing hide and seek with the toddler. Anybody here ever played hide and seek with the little child? And while you're playing, you say 
to the child, I'm looking for you. I have, I think, have enjoyed playing the little game with uh, my children, my babies, my babies, starting with Shannon. You know that little game, hopefully many of you played it, where you put your hand up to your face and you say to them, I can't see you. I can't see you. And they take their little hands and try to move your hand because it's important to them that daddy sees them. And if you play with them too long, they become frustrated and, and can't understand because they recognize that even though I can see daddy, it, it bothers me that he can't see me. The age old question then becomes somehow that as sin has grown, that as we have moved further, not Adam, where are thou? It has not become where are we in relationship to God? Here is the question now. Philip said to him, show us the Father. The question becomes, where is God? Where is God? That's the question that all of us ask. Maybe we don't articulate it in that manner. Maybe we don't put it in words, but don't you wonder, uh, first of all, in your own personal lives, anybody got some stuff going on in your life? And if not right now, have had some stuff going on in your life where you've raised the question, God, where are you? Don't you see my pain? I preach about this a lot because it affects us. I hope I'm not just preaching out of my own self. God, don't you see my pain? Don't you see my frustration? Don't you see the situation that I am in, God, and, and I continue to believe that you can fix all things, yet when I wake up in the morning, it's the same old stuff as yesterday? What the hell are you, God? With what's going on in the world? What's going on in America? What's going on in Buffalo? It's a question, God. Where are you? Don't you see what's going on? I struggle a lot with continuing to read the book of Habakkuk. And I remind you of that as I preach. If you have not read the book of Habakkuk, because Habakkuk looked upon what was going on in Israel, and, and that was this section of the world. And Habakkuk said, God, can't you see? What's going on? The sin, the wickedness, the evil. Can't you see what's going on? And, and God said to Habakkuk, Habakkuk, I see it. And instead of solving it the way you want me to solve it, Habakkuk, I am raising up a mighty army to come with their evil selves and cause stress in Israel. What does that stress do? Does it, does it punish? Or does it draw people back to me? Back to these centrally said, I, I just, I, I don't understand that. And yes, looking now at some of the things that's going on, I, I sometimes say, God, I don't understand um, racism. Racism. I don't understand it. God, why is it that you let some cultures grow, flourish. We could talk about statistics. We could talk about what racism continues to do to not only us and our children, but even now our grandchildren, and some of us have great grandchildren who still live in a racist society. God, why do you keep allowing that to happen? And God just said, Habakkuk, I'm in charge. He even said to him, I'm, I'm giving you the prophecy that says, I see, I know, I'm dealing with it. And he said, just, just write it down, Habakkuk, so that when I deal with it, it will be on record that I have said that I am, I will be, and I'm doing what I do. And he even dealt with Habakkuk when Habakkuk said, God, where are you? Finally, God spoke in his heart. And Habakkuk said, God, 
is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Sometimes we translate that to, to mean we think that God is just in the church and we come to church and, and be silent. But God's temple, first of all, God said, I'm a spirit. And they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And, and God's temple must be within your heart. God's temple must be within the temple of your own spiritual being. And we've got to honor that and acknowledge that. And finally, at the very end, Habakkuk said, no matter what happens, I'm going to believe God. God. Where are you? In America, this year, less than six months, we have dealt with the impeachment of a president immediately into a pandemic that has taken thousands and thousands and thousands of lives and, and, and we can talk about the pandemic that has taken thousands of lives, but I think most of us even have lost people that we know, that we respect and care about. I, I have people that I thought would be here longer than me who are gone. I was listening to Bishop Hankerson Elijah Hankerson on the line last night and, and uh, he, he talked about some of these people who still say that that COVID you know really is, is not as bad as they say it is and, and he said uh, just just me alone he, he said that I was in a meeting with one of the officials in Kojic. I was in a meeting with them one week and the following week I got the news that they had COVID and less than a week later, they died. They were gone. He said, I was in a meeting with the vice president of the department, one of the vice presidents of an association that I'm with. I was in a meeting with him. And four days later, he called me and said, I'm in the hospital. I've got COVID. He said, and four days later, he was gone. In a week's time, I was talking with him. I was in a meeting with the man. In a week, he was gone. It's real. That's what we're dealing with. God, where are you? When people who seemingly don't deserve the suffering that they're suffering, they're suffering. Where are you? That was the question that Philip asked. Philip asked his question in a statement. Philip said to Jesus, Jesus, we have been walking with you. You have been teaching us. We have watched you work miracles. We, we saw you, Jesus, when you healed people with leprosy. We saw you, Jesus, when the man who had been blind from his mother's womb and you reached down into the dirt and you made mud and you put the mud on his eyes and when you removed the mud, this man saw, we, we watched him when he was blind and now we saw you heal him. We saw that, Jesus. We saw Jesus. When the woman came and said, my son has died and you took the son by the hand and rose him up and he lived. We saw that, Jesus. All of your promises, all of the things that you've said, we've seen it. We watched you feed people. Jesus, if, if you want to deal with social justice issues, we watched you feed people when they were hungry. We watched you give people hope. We watched you promise that change is coming. And he said, but now, Jesus, here is the one thing we really want you to do. Is anybody still with me? Here's the one thing that we really want you to do. Show us the Father. Of all that you've done, Jesus, there's one thing we need to know. Let us know where is God? Hmm. God, where are you? Where were you 
few nights ago from that 75 year old man who, who has stood for peace, he was brutally shelved to the ground. And we saw in the video when blood was coming from his ears. What, what were you, God? Uh, could, couldn't you have stopped that? All of the anger and the hatred, God, can't you do something about it? Jesus, just show us the Father. I love what Jesus said. Two things let me leave with you today. Here is a message and you've got to get it. Jesus said, have I been with you so long and you still don't get it? Ephesus, have we been reading the Bible so long? Have we been coming to church so long and, and we still miss the point? We still don't get it? Here is the point. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. Philip, what do you think God was when I did heal the blind man? God was there. Where do you think God was when we were up on the mountain and, and the crowd of 5,000 people were there and I fed them? He said, God was there. Where do you think God was when that woman came with passion and said my son has died and I raised her son he said God was there if we believe in Jesus we've got to believe that in our faith God and all of his promises are there he's in every promise that he makes he's in every word that he has said But let me go down to verses 11 and 12. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or also believe me for the sake of the works himself. He said, don't, don't, don't you see what has been happening? Somehow we've got to believe that if we wonder, God, where are you? We, we've got to somehow believe that we have seen God do so many great things. And, and can we lose faith? Here is the simplicity of God's works. We woke up this morning. Must be God in that. We have hope that even on the darkest day, the sun is going to shine. Must be God in that. We have hope that even when it rains, that sometimes we're going to see a rainbow. God must be in that. But here is what goes even further. Verse 11, Jesus said, believe in me. But in verse 12, he says something significant. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Where is God? God is in us, doing, performing, working. God says, you see what needs to be done. You want to know where I am? I'm in you when you do something about it. Can you just keep sitting down, doing nothing, saying, where is God? No. He says, get up and do something. That's where I am. He said, the works that I do, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. God, where are you? I am in you. I am working in you. I am moving in you. I keep my promises, but I keep them in you. He says to us, go, heal the sick, raise the dead, and do it in my name. Let me do a parenthetic there. Let me do a parenthetic there. 
because for a long time I had I had trouble with that particular scripture because uh, I said, you know what, God, I, I want to do all that you're saying, but but when it comes down to raising dead folk, uh, I, I go to too many funerals and and uh, I have been there and watched people die, and I've had to say, how am I going to deal with them? And and I recognize that death is not just a physical phenomenon. Death is separation. What about the people who are walking around on this earth, living, breathing, moving, but are separated from God and who literally are dead because they're separated. And God says to us, give them life. What about people who are dead and maybe don't know it, who haven't recognized it? Now even more critical. Tuesday night, Tuesday night when we were talking with Sister Rachel, I raised a question. And I want to raise it here this Sunday morning. What about people who are taking this isolation? And even though they are not committing physical suicide, and, and we, we've got to deal with young people, isn't it terrible? Uh, the young people who have given up hope and don't want to live. Isn't it terrible? So many young people who say, I'm not afraid of death. Death is no big deal. Not only do they kill each other, but they say death is our destiny. But I raised the question, Sister Rachel, what about people who, for many reasons, are not committing physical suicide? but are committing spiritual suicide, emotional suicide, mental suicide, who are just giving up, dying. And Jesus says to us, raise the dead. Do you know what it would mean to somebody who was isolated to get a phone call that says, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying with you. Whatever you do, don't give up hope. Can I, can I say to Ephesus, whatever you do, don't get so comfortable there at home that either you choose to die or you choose to let someone else die. And you get up every morning and put your clothes on and make your bed up in a dead Raise the dead. Get up. Where is God? God is there when I wake up every morning. He's, he, he's with me. He is in me. He is doing what I do. Finally. Finally. Verse 14. Where is God? Verse 14 says, if you ask Anything in my name, I will do it. God is in our hopes. God is in our faith. Not only is he in his promises, but he says, I am in the keeping of my promises through your faith and your hope. We do have a question, where is God? Let me close once again by reminding you the story the late Bishop J.O. Patterson, some of you don't know him, have not heard of him. I had the privilege of, of watching him so many times. Bishop J.O. Patterson, after many years of being a great leader of the Church of God in Christ, died with cancer. As a matter of fact, he chose not to even, when he was diagnosed with cancer, he chose not to even get the chemotherapy treatments. He said, I, I just want to accept the will of God and the fate of God for many reasons. But I listened to him in one of the meetings, I think it was at a women's convention, the last one that he spoke at, as he was getting close to death. And, and God, if you have never heard Bishop J. O. Patterson preach or speak, you should Google him on, uh, you should look for him on YouTube or Google and listen to him preach. One of the most profound preachers, he was not a hooper, he was not a hollerer, just a profound preacher. But that night, 
He was this man who had cancer and the whole church was praying for him and feeling his pain. And he stood up and in his own slow, inimitable way, as he finished talking, he told a story. I can't tell it word for word like he did, but here's the story. He said, one night, there was a man and his daughter. The mother in the family had died, leaving them in grief and pain and agony. The father was left to raise his little girl alone. And one night in the loneliness of their house, a storm came up, flashing the, the lightning and, and the roaring of the thunder. And all of a sudden their power went out and there were no lights in the house. And when it came time to go to bed, the little girl said, Daddy, I don't want to sleep alone. I don't want to be alone. And he took her and put her there beside him. And it was dark. He said, and by and by, she said, Daddy, are you still here? And the father said, yes, I'm still here. By and by, she said to him, Daddy, which way are you turned? And he said, baby, I'm right here. Why do you want to know which way I'm turned? She said, Daddy, are you turned toward me? And he said, yes, I'm turned toward you. Why? She said, I'm afraid, but I'm all right when I'm here with you. She said, and I can't see you. I can't see anything. But as long as I know that your face is turned toward me, I believe everything is going to be all right. That's what we need to say. God as long as your face is turned toward us, even in the darkness, even in our fear, even in the uncertainty of the times that our not knowing what's going to happen, if your face is turned toward us, everything is going to be all right. This is Communion Sunday. And as we prepare to remember the death, the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, we take bread and we remember him. We take of the cup and we remember him. You may not have our usual communion wafer. You may not even have grape juice. As a matter of fact, you may not have the physical substance of communion, but right where you are, let's remember together the body, the broken body, and the shed blood of our Lord. Jesus said to them on that communion night, the last supper, when he was with them, the Bible said he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it. God, more than anything, we just always want to be in communion with you. Our relationship with you, Jesus, reminds us that God is with us. And we remind ourselves that in your body that was broken, stripes were put on it, that because of that, we can be healed. And so we take this bread and we bless it. We say, that as we take of this bread, we remember your broken body and we thank you for it. While you're there, if you have bread, just take it and eat the bread. And remember Christ's broken body, for it was broken for us. Thank you for the privilege, God, of remembering your broken body in Jesus' name. The Bible said in the same manner, he took the cup and he said to them, this cup, 
represents my blood. Because when my blood is shed for you, it washes you. My blood is given for the atonement of your sins. And if you believe on me and my blood, you shall have life that more abundantly and that eternally. He said, as often as you drink of this cup, remember me. Lord, we thank you for your broken body, for your blood which was shed for the atonement of our sins. And because we remember you, once again today, our faith is renewed. Our hope is in you, in Jesus' name. Don't forget, Tuesday night at six o'clock, right here in our online church, join us as Sister Rachelle Map Morrison. I mean, that was a that was an unbelievably powerful session on Tuesday night. And you need to come on and listen to these sessions as we talk together about moving into a new world. It's not after COVID because COVID is going to be around for a while. Um, you heard um, Sister Latasha talk about the friend of her son that committed suicide right here close to us. There is so much pain, so much hopelessness. And still the truth, even as we listen, some of us are feeling pain. Let's not feel it by ourselves. Tuesday night, join us. Tuesday night, join us. Don't forget, we still continue with prayer at 6.30 each night. Join us tonight as we have prayer at 6.30. Shannon, do you have announcements? Um, yes, sir. Uh, as the pastor stated, we will be in prayer at 6.30 on tonight on Tuesday. Because of the workshop, there is no prayer um, for that one. There is a separate number, and I'm not sure. There were some people that said that they had problems getting in on Tuesday. Um, it's the same. You go to the same link, or you can call the same number, but the access ID number is different. The access ID number is 822-4668-6165. And if you have not called in before, especially if you're calling in from the phone, I log in ahead of time. So I'm gonna ask you if you could call in a little bit early so that if you're having problems, um, you can contact me before I'm in and then we'll try to make sure um, to help you get in. So once again, that access number is 822-4668. 6165. It is the same password, 062449. Um, also, uh, Latasha, if you could put the giving information up, which she probably maybe did already. No, no not yet. I, I have not. I'm doing it now, but um, Elder Dooley also has some additional announcements too. Perfect. So then Elder Dooley, um, and as a matter of fact, Elder Dooley, if you want, then when you finish your announcements, you can just read by then. Latasha will have the giving information up. Thank you. All right. And I then it'll be back into the hands of the pastor for closing. All right. I just want to um, continue to encourage the women to pay their uh, dues. Um, you can pay at Zelle at Ephesus342 at gmail.com. Or you can cash app at D O O L A N I T 61. And I promise you, all the monies will be deposited the next day into the account. And I want to thank all those women who I have paid their dues. Also, remind you again that the month of June is our Bible Jeopardy month. And on this Wednesday, we'll be playing again. Um, some people, if, if there were, if I could give them an idea of what kinds of questions to study. So I want to encourage those who want to play, be familiar with your favorite Bible study uh, stories. Jonah, John the Baptist, Noah, and any Bible sto uh, story that is associated with the number 40. So if that can help you, um, just go back and familiarize yourself with those stories. And um, I think that you'll do well on uh, Bible Jeopardy on Tuesday. 
And I'll turn that now. I'll turn it over to Latasha. Thank you so much. And um, sister, I'm mean, Elder Dooley. If you could put those uh, those payment amounts over in chat to everyone, I was trying to type as fast as I could, and then I got some other messages, so I wasn't able to do that. If you want to sure. audibly say them again, I could type them in for you, unless you feel comfortable um, to put them there and just I make can sure. say, I can I can say them again. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate that. And so um, I, I don't have any other announcements for me. I do know that um, any prayer requests that came in, I did send them over to leadership. So I'm not sure if they'll be addressing it now or in prayer this evening. Um, so I wanna just turn it back over to the pastors um, so that they can close out, but I'm all set. And I'll have all this information for the uh, giving is in the chat. It'll also be on Facebook as well as on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. Um, again, the Zell, the, that payment for the women's department is Zell at Ephesus342 at gmail.com or Cash App, D O O L A N I T 61. Thank all of you. Thank you all for those announcements. I just got a text message. We're going to pray a special prayer for Sister Nicole Hargrove. Uh, she just got some terrible news about her health condition. Uh, and, um, you know, Nicole has has suffered for a long time, but she continues to smile. As a matter of fact, by your head right there, God, um, I pray a special prayer right this moment for Sister Nicole. You know, Nikki, God, uh, and all that she has gone through all these years continues to have faith in you. Not only does she continue to have faith in you, God, she spends as much time choosing to be up as she chooses to be down. She chooses God to smile as much as she cries. And so now I just still say, well, God, you are a miracle worker, so just keep on working miracles. God, you are a miracle worker, so just keep working miracles. Work another miracle for Sister Nicole today. Don't make her wait, don't make her suffer, but work that miracle for her and her family. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for your prayer. Um, pray for the nation. Pray for the nation. Pray for the nation. We may not get out and march like others. We may not get out and do a lot of things that others are doing, but pray for the nation. And can I encourage you, if you have not yet chosen to come on at 6.30 for prayer, just give it a try. Um, even if you don't come and spend 30 minutes, you can come in and out, but try prayer because prayer works. God bless everyone. Be blessed as we leave. Now, God, we thank you for this privilege of fellowship. We are together, and we thank you for it. Our minds and our hearts are knit together, and receive this worship, God, and let us be blessed in our spirits as we worship, praise, and pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everybody. Good evening. Good day, everybody. Love you all. Good, good day. God bless. Thank you. Yeah, I love you too. Love you all.